you said cut cost, cut cost or a, a, a accrue cost, and you said a, your season will be at risk. Yeah, your season, half of your season at least, is at risk. And of course, we're talking about the one and only Kyrie Irving. So Kyrie Irving, and we both, yeah, you got the Kyrie package. I say, is Brooklyn a shot, you know, a shot or two away from a title? It really comes down to that. You like that, huh? You like that? Aha. Uh -huh. uh, Kyrie Irving. I got you. I got you. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Waiter, waiter, taste the soup. Taste the soup. <laughs> uh, anyway, look, man, Kyrie Irving, the character, the character that we know, doesn't mm -hmm. do it. And if the character does it, that is where the novel comes to an end, because this character has had a breakthrough, sees the world in a different way. See you later. You thought I was this, but no, no, I'm somebody else. The Kyrie Irving I know and you know perception wise is not taking that vaccine. So what happens to the Brooklyn Nets this season? What happens to Kyrie Irving this season if he continues to be the last holdout on the block? I don't know what happens, but I know who I'm going to go to for the answer. I'm going to go to number seven. I'm going to go to the best player in the world. I know you don't believe he's the best player in the world. I know you have some, you know, grandiose belief that, you know, 49 year old LeBron James is still the best player in the world and everything else. You know, how'd you fine. say he is? How'd you say? Like 49. Say? He's, he's like he's like he's he's <laughs> okay. like a step away from 50. You know, he's he's older than Tom Brady as far as I as far as I can I can see, right? But no. The problem here is Kyrie doesn't have the most juice, but he does have the most juice because he has Kevin Durant. As long as he has Kevin Durant, as long as Kevin Durant is in his corner. And I'm not saying that Kevin Durant will always be in his corner, but he's still in his corner right now. You're missing an exhibition game. You're missing a preseason game. You're missing practices, right? Nobody wants to go to training camp. Nobody wants to deal with all that stuff anyway. As far as we know, Kyrie Irving, for all of his warts, keeps himself in pretty good basketball shape, right? You don't really see any concerns about him on the floor aside from being healthy, about staying healthy. But that's not a basketball shape issue for the most part. Kyrie Irving, for whatever reason, whether it's in the stars or the universe or whatever it is, Michael Holly, that boy does not want to take the shot. This grown man does not want to mm. take the jab for whatever reason he does not want to. And I believe that he's probably expe expressed this to his teammates and his teammates has his support right now because it doesn't cost you anything. If he's not going to be available for 48 games, and not just 48 games, but we're talking about practices, we're talking about team building exercises because for unvaccinated Ooh. players in a regular sense, yeah. It's so punitive from the NBA standpoint. It's punitive for unvaccinated players to be around team, to be able to bond with your teammates, let alone the standards, practices, and procedures of New York freaking city. You know what I mean? Like, this is the worst yeah. thing. And when we're talking about player, think about it. We were just talking about player empowerment, right? We never believed that, A, a pandemic would ever happen that would cause all of these things. Nobody could ever see this actually coming, that real life would affect athletics in such a way that even the fiber of the very being of availability will come into play, right? This is something that Steve Nash and Sean Marks were not equipped for. When you have players leading the franchise, there's a certain level of ownership, there's a certain level of equity. You want that, right? But what happens when it's time for someone to be in charge? What, time, what happens when it's time for someone whose name is at the top of the masthead to actually be the person who has to direct and lead a franchise and have hard conversations? If you're going to have hard conversations with Kyrie Irving and he's not going to listen, then the next person you have to have a hard conversation with is Kevin Durant. Kevin, can we win like this? Can we continue to play one game on, one game off? He's not here. He is. And employing two different game plans and everything else because Kyrie Irving refuses to, by his own choice, by his own merit, it's a choice, chooses not to take the vaccine and the consequences that come behind it. And if Kevin Durant at 34 years old, think about it, he's not 27 anymore. If Kevin Durant wants to accumulate winning championships and reclaim his time as the best player in the game, he can't afford to waste this year. And if Kyrie Irving right. doesn't get that, then mm -hmm. maybe Kevin Durant's going to have to make a hard decision with the Brooklyn Nets and say, you know what? Did you order the code red? And you, you know what Colonel Jessup said at the end of, did you order the code red? Colonel Jessup cracked. I, I remember what he said. He said, <laughs> you're damn right. I, hey, you're damn right. I did. That's right. Yep. You're damn sure right. And, he, and, and, he, and Kevin Durant might order that code red. 
Well, look, you said if Kyrie doesn't do it on his own, you got Kevin Durant. And if Kevin Durant can't get there, maybe this guy who spoke about Kyrie Irving, maybe this guy can get a word through. I want him to be on the team, of course. Our, our, he's, he's been a huge part of, um, since I've been here, a huge part of you know our success, the success that we did have last year. And we kind of was finding a rhythm to whereas, you know, uh, that chemistry that we built, you know, especially I, I can remember last year, that one road trip we had, we were just, you know, me and Kyrie, and he's just a special talent that you don't really see often. Um, so, of course, you know, I would want him to be on the team, and, um, you know, he's one of the reasons why I came here. He's one of the reasons why I came here. Look, the, 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 the comments from Harden are spot on, and you kind of miss, when you talk about Kyrie, I know his fans, he's a polarizing guy, Vinny. But those numbers, those numbers are insane. Look at the field goal percentage. We're not talking about an old school 1985 big man shooting 50% from the field. You know, go down low over Lane Beer and Jack Sigma and Moses Malone and kind of put it in. We're talking about a guy who does, who's a great finisher, but is a is a shooter, is a perimeter player, 40% from three-point range, 92% from the line. And he's a he's a baller. The guy's a great player, but I don't care if you have Steve Nash. I don't care if you have Kevin Durant, James Harden, uh, Dred Irving, his father. I don't, I don't care. This is the kind of guy, and, and, and Benny, we all know people like this. The more you say, come on, man, like, like, come on, let's do this. The more you appeal to them, the more it's kind of off-putting. Like, they feel like, hey, hey why, why are you sweating me? Why are you pushing up on me like this? So you can give him a lot of information and you can give him a logical reason why it makes a lot of sense for him to get the shot and help Brooklyn win a championship. But I think what is, it, this is what you got to do. You got to leave him alone. You got to leave him alone and hope that just one day he decides just very casually, hey, I, I got the shot. Hey, thanks for watching, brother, from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.